What was there before the Big Bang? Scientists have been trying to answer this question for years, but new finds are giving them surprising new information. Brian Cox and other experts have shown that the answer may be a lot trickier and scarier than we thought. Cox says the idea is that the universe wasn't hot and dense before the Big Bang as we always think it was. It was cold, empty, and growing very quickly instead. The growth we're seeing now is called inflation, and it made the universe what it is today. But inflation didn't happen everywhere. It stopped in some places, which is what we now call the Big Bang, but it kept going in other places. This idea, called the inflationary multiverse, says that our world is only one of many. This point of view says that the universe is like a fractal, with an endless number of Big Bangs happening in different parts of space and time. Every one of these areas turns into its own world, and ours is just a small part of a much bigger cosmic landscape. But what is inflation, and why did science find it so strange? Before the Big Bang, space grew very quickly, which is called inflation. It was caused by a strange kind of energy. At this point in time, space spread very quickly, making the universe look flat, and even by smoothing out any bumps. Then, the energy that was making the space expand was let go. This heated up space, and made the particles that make up everything around us. We used to think that the Big Bang, this sudden burst of energy, was the start of everything. It was just a part of the universe's history, which brings up new questions. What did we have before inflation? Also, why does the world keep getting bigger? The universe is never really empty. The thought of absolute nothingness doesn't really work in space because it is so big. The universe wouldn't be truly empty even if we took away all of its energy. New types of energy are always being made as the world expands, even when particles, photons, and radiation are not present. There are quantum fields, which are the building blocks of reality, even in a void. This is the reason why space will never be completely empty, and the universe will always be making radiation, even where there is nothing else. There can't be true nothingness, because these quantum fields make sure that something always stays the same. So, is it possible that there was nothing before the universe? According to what we know now, space still holds some energy even when it is completely empty. This zero-point energy is the most nothing-like thing we can think of, but it still stands for something. The lowest amount of energy that exists everywhere. The universe is growing, from the past to the present. The world is always changing. As space grows, it pulls galaxies farther apart and cools the universe as a whole. In the beginning, after the Big Bang, the universe was hot and dense, but as time went on it got bigger, colder, and less dense. As space grows, so does the light from faraway galaxies. This is why we see redshift, which is when the light waves from galaxies seem to get longer as they move away from us. This stretching causes energies to drop and temperatures to drop. This is why the universe is much colder now than it was at the start. It's possible to get rid of all matter and energy in the world. What would be left? There would still be empty space, which is ruled by physics rules and full of quantum fields. Dark energy is the mysterious power that speeds up the expansion of the universe. This space would continue to grow even if there were no particles or radiation. How inflation played a part in the history of the universe. The time of rapid expansion before the Big Bang, called inflation, was very important in shaping our world. Before inflation, there was probably a very strong type of energy in the universe that made space stretch at an impossible speed. This growth evened out any early bumps, making the universe smooth and even like it is now. But inflation brings up new issues. Where did it all start if inflation went on forever in some parts of space and made an endless number of Big Bangs? What role does inflation play in how we think about the Big Bang? We need to look at three main ideas in order to answer these questions. The hot Big Bang, the theory of cosmic inflation, and the idea of an ultimate beginning. Separate but linked, the Big Bang and inflation. Astronomers like Edwin Hubble and Vesto Slipher saw that galaxies were moving away from us at the beginning of the 20th century. This led to the idea that the universe is getting bigger. 
This growth led to the idea that the universe must have been much smaller and denser in the past. This idea led to the idea of the Big Bang, a moment when all matter and radiation were squished into a single point with an infinitely high temperature and density. The Big Bang theory, on the other hand, couldn't explain some things that were seen, like how the universe is flat and has a constant temperature. This is the point where inflation comes in. It's possible that inflation is what made the universe so flat and smooth, but it also means that the Big Bang was not the real start. It was more like a change from the state of inflation to the hot, dense world we know today. Issues with the Big Bang, the horizon, and flatness. Issues. The Big Bang theory explains a lot about the world, but it has some problems. This is called the horizon problem, and it means that parts of the world that have never been in contact with each other seem to have the same temperature and other properties. This means that these areas must have been linked to each other in the past, even though they are too far apart for them to have shared knowledge since the Big Bang. The flatness problem is another problem. The forces of expansion and gravity seem to be perfectly matched in the universe, making it flat and stable. But how did the world keep this fine balance? The answer is inflation, which explains why space stretched so quickly that it smoothed out any curves that were there before. Why did our world have these specific traits when it first started? Experts have thought about this question for a long time. Early theories helped us figure out what happened in the Big Bang, but newer theories, such as the inflation theory, explain why the universe is so uniform and why some expected particles, like magnetic monopoles, don't exist. The question of what happened before the Big Bang is still very much open. Alan Guth, a physicist, came up with a new way to explain these puzzles in 1980. Inflation, the early stage of fast and continuous growth. Guth says that the universe's energy wasn't split up into matter and radiation particles like it is now. This energy, on the other hand, was part of space itself and grew and stretched the universe at an amazing speed. Three main problems are fixed by inflation. This is the horizon problem. It asks why the universe seems to have such a uniform temperature and density when different parts of it haven't had time to communicate with each other since the Big Bang. According to inflation, everything was once linked in a small, dense state before it quickly spread out, which explains why things are so similar now. The flatness problem. Because inflation blew up the universe so much, any original curvature is no longer there. This makes the universe look amazingly flat. Regarding the monopole problem, inflation also explains why we don't see strange artifacts like magnetic monopoles which we should see if the world got too hot. Inflation stopped the universe from going to those extremes, so these leftovers didn't form. Putting structure into the universe. Not only does inflation solve these problems in cosmology, it also gives us a clue about how objects in space like galaxies came to be. Small quantum changes in the fabric of space were sped up to cosmic levels during inflation. This created the universe with the bumps that would eventually grow into galaxies, clusters, and stars. The cosmic microwave background, CMB, the afterglow of the Big Bang, and the large-scale framework of the universe have all shown that these early flaws were real. Even though these changes were very small, they were enough to make everything we see today possible. In the 1980s, scientists made very accurate predictions about how these changes would be seen in the CMB. Many observations made since then have confirmed those forecasts. This makes inflation theory even stronger as a way to explain how the world got started. Before the Big Bang, what happened? Still, inflation brings up a very important question. If inflation explains what happened before the Big Bang, does that mean the Big Bang wasn't the real start? In the first model of the Big Bang, the universe could be traced back to a singularity, which is a point where the temperature and density are both infinite. But inflation makes things more complicated. Since inflation makes space grow at an exponential rate, 
It would take an infinite amount of time for the universe to reach a state where it has no size, which is what the Big Bang model says happened. It's hard to imagine the world starting from a single point, because inflation keeps them from happening. We can only see proof from a very short time ago, like the marks left by quantum fluctuations. This is just before inflation caused the Big Bang. Also, endless inflation makes things even more complicated. In this case, inflation will never really end. It stops in some places, like our universe, but keeps going in others. This makes a multiverse, which is a group of many pocket worlds, each with its own Big Bang. This process erases all records of what might have existed before inflation, which makes it almost impossible to find out how the universe began after that point. Eternal Inflation and the Many Worlds Eternal inflation is interesting, but it doesn't go back in time. Studies have shown that space-time that is expanding cannot go back in time forever. It had to have come from a different, maybe single, state. This shows that inflation doesn't always give a clear answer to the question of where everything came from, even though it does explain a lot about the early universe. It's hard for other models, like circular or bouncing cosmologies, to explain where the universe came from in the first place. These models say that the world goes through cycles of getting bigger and smaller, but they can't get around the problem of a beginning. What does nothing mean? What did the universe come from if we believe it had a start? It's not as simple as it seems to think about nothingness. Quantum fields are still there even in the emptiest parts of space. Even when there are no particles or energy in these fields, they still move and communicate. In other words, the thing that is closest to nothing is still something. A vacuum full of quantum potential. The vacuum origin hypothesis is the idea that the universe could have started from a quantum fluctuation in this vacuum. It has interested physicists for a long time. This theory says that the world started out as a change in nothing, which made everything we see today. Even though this is still just a guess, it's an interesting idea that makes us think about what life and nothingness really mean. There are quantum fields and virtual particles. Space is not the only thing that makes up the universe we see. Quantum field theory says that there are energy fields everywhere in space. These fields combine with each other to make everything from atoms to stars. These fields are still working even when they have the least amount of energy which is called the vacuum state. Virtual particles, which are temporary particles that appear and disappear instantly, are always taking energy from the void. These fields and virtual particles are very important to the structure of the world, but they make it harder for us to understand what nothingness is. Can we ever really say that the world was empty if it is full of these moving fields? Dark energy and the universe getting bigger. The speeding up of the expansion of the universe is caused by dark energy, an unknown force. The early rapid expansion can be explained by inflation. The current growth, on the other hand, is caused by dark energy. Even a very long time from now, when all the stars have died out and matter is spread out, dark energy will keep the universe growing. In other words, the universe has never been truly empty, and it probably never will be. The growth and the radiation and quantum fields that fill space will go on as long as dark energy is present. Embracing the mystery. The end. Scientists have been trying to figure out many secrets about the early universe for decades, but inflation theory has changed the way we think about them. But as we've seen, it also makes us think of new questions. What did we have before inflation? What made it start? Also, why does the universe not like the thought of nothingness? We might not have all the answers yet, but the search for them is far from over. We are getting closer to understanding where everything we see in the universe came from as we keep exploring it and improving our ideas. Be sure to check back for more articles like this one. Tell us what you think about these cosmic puzzles below.